And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello to everyone. Yes, I am back. I don't know if that's a good thing, but I'm back. What's up, my man, Josh Thompson? Had all the pressure of the show, four hours all by himself. Holy shit, that had to be one of the worst goddamn things I didn't, ever. Dave, I'm sorry. I didn't think it was going to go wait. four hours, man. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. But look, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, I was actually kind of uh, excited about the fights and uh, to be able to see it all come to fruition. First event, you know, with the Bellator PFL banners together and joined and and so far, so on. There's so many questions that still need to be answered. Here we are, you know, you know, five days, eight days, whatever it is later. Full, almost a full week. Five, eight days, whatever. Almost. Almost a full week. But, uh, but yeah, it's going to be, um, you know, yeah. But, hey, I'm sorry. Just wanted to throw it out to you and uh, send you Appreciate my condolences. It. And, uh, you know, I obviously, I didn't want to give you your space, but I was sending you and checking up on you through your wife. Yeah, you were. I appreciate <laughs> appreciate everything you sent me, brother. Look, it's. Yeah, what are you gonna yeah, do? Yeah, it's it is it's part of life, and it happens to all of us, and it's uh, it's a guarantee. Yeah, it is. So death and taxes, baby. And, it, man. and then we we're gonna say some nice things when you come on, but you took twenty minutes to load the thing, so we were like, screw that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, screwed the pooch oh, on that. It's all over. But now. I mean, you know, I wanted just to you know say I love you, and uh, I'm glad you're back. I appreciate, it, man. Right. I am. I'm glad to be back. It's a, when, you, when you're when you're away, you know. It's like I just want you know. I just need to get home, and there's things I need mm -hmm. to do. And uh, it was you know once you know everything was in that position of, well, it's this is all over. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, time to get back. Time to get busy. Yeah, you know. Ah, and, but hey, we've got some. Uh, we've got some big fights coming up this weekend and yeah. um you know we've got we've got some bkfc which i'm i'm a big fan of as well and uh that's a big 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 fight there that's a huge fight i think it's probably the biggest fight in bkfc history i would say yeah, it might be the best or the biggest one it's... right now they've been able to build up to but um i mean i would say maybe the polyology and the artem loboff one was big only because given the circumstances and the timing of it all that kind of helped catapult them and give them some name recognition so it's almost like the Bonner okay. and the, you know, in the Forrest Griffin fight kind of, you know, yeah. two great fighters, you know, kind of in the very beginning to help catapult the the organization. I think I look at it a little bit. Like well, if you're going to, if, if you're going to talk about, they had a great fight. Loboff was in one, but it wasn't against Malinaji. Mm. It was against Jason, Jason Knight. Knight. Very true. God yep. damn. Those guys beat the living shit out of great. each other. I loved it. <laughs> It's great. As long as it wasn't you, it's great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've yeah. thought about doing a BKFC fight. You and I have talked about it off air a couple of times. I'm like, you know, yeah. it's look, doing the MMA thing, it, I think I'm over it. But doing a BKFC or doing a doing a boxing match, I may, I may scratch the itch, John. It, it's just one of those things. <laughs> like if I if I only got to train for one thing, I've never had that in my whole life. Never. I mean, yeah, sure, yeah. I just train for wrestling. But there's a lot of areas of wrestling. There's the, you know, you've got to get the takedown, just control from the top, and it's like, you know, escaping from the bottom. I get it. But boxing is boxing. There's a lot of footwork involved. There's a lot of, you know, I, I understand that. But boxing and the BKFC, sorry, man, but I grew up fighting all the damn time in the streets. It's, and I'm not saying that's going to make me a good BKFC fighter, but it, <laughs> it does, it does give you the, it does give you a little bit of the itch. Makes me, makes me feel like, is that something I want to scratch? You know, but, but then I also think too, like, is that something I want to scratch? Dave, pull up a picture of Luke Rockhold <laughs> after his fight with Mike Perry and take a look at his teeth. John. And this will, this will definitely, Get rid of your itch. His his <laughs> teeth, his teeth from the yeah, his teeth from the left to the right. Like if you're looking at this oh, picture, yeah. that whole right yeah. side of his teeth were loose for a long, long. I don't oh, know yeah. for like probably over two months. He said he's like he could only eat on one side. He was telling me like he's like I can barely, I can't eat. He would drink it through a straw for a bit. I'm like, oh, I mean, damn. He always had kind of a nice smile too, but damn. 
Dude, hold it. Nice smile. Yeah. Ralph Lauren <laughs> model. <laughs> look, look, not not all these Ralph Lauren models show their teeth. This guy was able to do that. Like not uh, all of well, them do. Not anymore. Yeah, he's yeah. uh I mean, he's got them. I think he's got them all fixed up and stuff now, but still well, I'm sure I'm sure he did, but expensive. you know, th that right there, that picture tells you uh, look it's a tough sport oh, yeah. it's it is it is a sport meant oh, yeah. for guys that they're just dogs yeah. and i'm not saying dude you are one of those guys you're a dog <laughs> but don't let someone hit you in the mouth like luke did because that's what happens to yeah your i know it's look at look at through the lip though that's the biggest thing oh yeah you know i think uh the proper mouthpiece obviously he was wearing the one of those you know gum kind of mouthpieces the ones that yeah. in the front take up the whole mouth no. like a true boxing mouthpiece but you need more yeah. than that you need yes, you need more than you that you can't just have that because it floats around a little bit in there you can't i mean you could get ones that kind of mold to you with a little breathing out the front but look you're fighting at a faster pace with two minute rounds you know what yep. i mean so yeah. it's 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 guns blazing like you're breathing out your mouth your mouth wide open that's how shit like that happens but uh bkfc yeah. is this weekend and you got the ufc one of one of my favorite fights possibly coming up obviously is um is Benel Dariush and Armand Sarukian, but then also I scroll on down to you know the Jalen Turner and and our All boy Bobby Green, who we just had on. You've got and this this card is stacked, man. And you've got the Sean Brady card. versus Kelvin Gastelum. You know Sean coming back after his long layoff of the Bilal fight when he lost his first loss he's taken in his career against Kelvin Gastelum, Gastelum who's returning to one seventy. And uh, you know there's other fights on this on this card, man. That are that are looking to be really good. I'm looking forward to it. So, uh, Misha Tate, she's making it. She's yeah, she's back. back. She's back. She's back. You know, I'm always gonna tune in for that. You know. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, hey, let's go ahead and start from the top of the uh, top of the food chain here. Let's go right up to uh, Benil Dariush versus Armand Sarukian. Great fight. Look, great fight. It is a great fight. You're absolutely right. This is a fight where you take a look, and both guys have uh, advantages in this fight, and. We've talked about it before, and I think that the the real question is, where is Benil Dariush's head at? Is it that it was a one-off, he had the performance against Charles, and he just got caught, and hey, it's past, I didn't, it wasn't my night, and he's still the same guy, or is it that it affects him? Is it that things have slowed down, maybe, and he's going up against a young lion in Sarukian, who is... He's young, he's fast, he's explosive, he's got all that. But Dariush is the guy, the wily veteran. He's got all that experience, and he pulls that out on guys. And look, he's good everywhere. He he will stand and bite down and wing shots when he's hurt. He has got an incredible ground game. He's. I look at all of this, you know, and you, you can't do MMA math. They both have fought, you know, Gamrot. It was a good fight between Gamrot and Sarukian. It was a dominant fight between Gamrot and Dariush. Dariush dominated yeah. that fight for the most part. And so you can take a look at that. But there are, un unfortunately, you have to be honest and say, I'm not saying that Dariush is going down, but I'm not saying that he's getting any different or any better mm -hmm. while Sarukian is continuing to get better. And has he reached the level of Darius at this point? We're going to find out. Well, look, we just did a 20, 25 minute long uh, live show over on OnlyFans account. So if you guys can check it out over there, you guys can still subscribe to us over there. It is free at OnlyFans.com slash weighing in. We just dropped 20, 25 minutes of, of knowledge, back knowledge. We're probably not going to repeat a whole lot of that right now on this. But if you guys want a chance, head on over there and check it out at OnlyFans.com slash weighing in. Look, Benil Darius, I'm going to be honest. I think he's fantastic. This is where I'm going to give a little bit of a comparison. And I wanted to throw this out to you uh, on this channel here when we're doing this is I give it, is he like a Tony Ferguson? He's a very hittable. He's okay with taking a shot to give a shot. He scrambles like Tony Ferguson a little bit. He's very good on the ground and he is a dog. He will bite down on the mouthpiece and exchange with you. He invites the damage to give it back to you. He's, so well rounded, he does things that uh, Sarukian just hasn't seen before. When fighters say, "Ah, this guy's got nothing," I, I've, I've, he's not, he's not going to do anything I haven't seen before. I've seen that's it all. a bunch of shit. When you're talking about someone like Benil Dariush, <laughs> Tony Ferguson, those those type of guys, 
no, no, no. They, they, Yuri Prochaska, those guys don't fight like normal fighters. And so sarukin has got to be very careful uh, in this thing. But I think that Bilnil Dariush is somebody that can can get it all done. He can do all these things. But when they, when it does come his time, though, John, I think it's going to come fast. And is it this time? Is this the time? Is it like is it adds up? It goes quick. It goes quick, John. It, especially at thirty six. How, yeah, how old is he right now? Thirty five. Mm, Can you click on uh, Benil there, I Dave, for it. us? Yep, it's loading. Yeah, he's thirty four. Thirty four, thirty five. When's he turn thirty? Oh, he'll be in May. May. Oh, he's got time. He's about only halfway there. Mm. Um, he's a baby. Um, <laughs> he's, a baby. <laughs> he's but at thirty four. Look, still in his prime. I look at the the thirty four pushing the prime there, like that thirty four years. He's wise. He fights a lot smarter now. I think the moment of the Charles Oliveira fight got to him a little bit, understanding what was at stake, yeah. knowing what what was there, yeah. and hey, he was going to get a title shot off of this. He gets this last win, how many wins in a yeah. row? And it just and here's the thing, just Charles happen. fights very very tight. He fights very composed. He doesn't let the moment get to him. He lets the fight develop in front of him. He sticks in his in his wheelhouse. He doesn't get outside of it. Sarukian is a um, he's an action fighter. He's someone that reacts to whatever it is you're doing, and he does it with emotion. Whether it's his wrestling, whether it's his explosiveness with his combinations, he loads up on stuff. He will tend to slow down in certain parts of the fight. Dariush will just scramble the shit out of you and try to make you work as much as possible. This will come down to the fight IQ of Dariush, who sometimes doesn't show it and then sometimes does. And the way he shows, this is what I want to make sure we're clear on. The way that Benil Dariush shows his uh, fight IQ is he understands where Sarukian is weak. Well, Sarukian will be weak, kind of how Gamrot was weak in certain areas. When you think you've got him taken down, he will Gramby roll. You think you got him taken down? He'll do a forward roll. He'll do. He'll he'll go ahead and let you take him down. And as you come down, he'll put a hook sweep in and add and add some sort of momentum to get underneath you to come up on a leg. He will threaten submissions to make you pull out and create space so he can get back to his feet. He will use his fight IQ in that way versus where Armand Sarukian's got to use his fight IQ and. Careful pressure. Don't do anything that's going to leave myself wide open. Don't load up too much yeah. and don't throw excessive combinations of, say, five and six that where I could leave myself open to get hit with a knee because Benil will just jump at one moment and throw a flying knee. Those are the things that he's got to be very cautious of. I think he's going to have to fight a conservative fight, but, he's gonna, but it's going to have to be very fast and explosive because he can't afford to let Darius dictate the pace. I agree with you. I believe that Armand needs to go in there and it's one, two, one, two, threes. Mm -hmm. No more. And you're absolutely right because that will lead him into overextending and all of a sudden he's going to end up in a bad position because Dariush is awkward. And it's, it's always, it's so hard to explain how difficult it is to train for an opponent that is awkward because we don't like awkward. We just don't. Yeah. We just don't respond well to it. And we like smoothness because we can we can get a flow with it. And all of a sudden, you're you're used to having your flow and everything. And all of a sudden, you've got this guy in front of you that just does things in an awkward fashion, is different, and it throws you off. And it's it makes you slow down and stop when normally you'd be going. You're like, eh, what the hell's he doing? Yeah. And it's because you just he does things different than everyone else. And that's that's been a lot of what has made Benil successful throughout his career now and he you know like we talked about you know his fight with close that's the guy when you're looking at him and you've got to be careful because even when you have him hurt and he can be mm -hmm. hurt he becomes dangerous because he bites down and he throws back and you cannot sit there and open up trying to finish him because all of a sudden he's finishing you so you got to fight a very smart and composed fight and that's the question right now <clears throat> I believe that Armand Sarukin is in that position at this point of his career. He's he's gained the maturity and the experience needed to fight that smart fight. I agree. He, but the question is, the question is, John, he's still a baby. Like he's twenty five years old, I think. But look, like on but look at how many fights. Yeah, he has. I know. Look how many and, and he's look got who twenty three professional who he's fought. fights. Exactly. Look at those three losses. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's you know if, if you take a look at the three losses. 
I mean, you know, Makachev, Gamrot, and then his and then early in his career, one of his first down, fights. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw yep. that video. Someone was rotating that video around to get under his skin. I think this week. Yeah, <laughs> throwing shit up from like ten years ago. You gotta Calm love down. That. Calm yeah, down. How old is he? 25, 27. Okay, so look, 27. this is that. This is kind of his prime. They're looking it's to capitalize. That, this, is, this is the time that the rise. Yeah. They're looking to capitalize right now on his success. So like, look, if we can get him to beat Darius. We've got him now yep. right into that title talking contention that now if he does become champion, I've got a champion that I can market at a young age that will linger around the, the top three, four, five, you know, weight class for, for the next while. 10 years. Yep. It's a, yep. it's a, it's a classic uh, promoter's dream. If you're a promoter, this, this is, is what, what you're looking, looking for. for. You're looking for a guy like him. Look, when I go back to, to Darius, there's there's a couple guys and you said that he's wild and crazy and he does things that you know and we talked about this on the uh, OnlyFans account is that you're right he's like a Tony Ferguson like look I'll give this example when I took Tony down the very first takedown it came so easy but he turned and he just rolled right through and I was like okay I didn't wrestle after that <laughs> it's and okay why it just was like okay it just all of a sudden clicked in my head like this is not going to be what I thought it was going to be. It changed. It changed my outlook and the way that I thought. Very much how, how I thought when you said like, oh, the guy that does things and it just kind of takes it out of you a little bit. Pat Healy. You know, I know I broke my ribs in the first round and two in my sternum right here on my chest. But to be honest, I've trained with Pat plenty of times after that fight. He just has that laboring style that like it's almost like it's so slow that I moved out of the way of his punch and I moved back and then he hit me. It was that <laughs> slow. It's it is, but that's true. That is Pat. Yeah. That was the way Pat And the fought. way he hangs on you, the way he, like, once he gets his body and you're like, get off me. You just, you can shrug him off, but he's never really off of you because his arms are so long. Like he, you can, I can hip him all the way down to his face, but he can still lock his hands around your legs and around your butt and then lift and work his way back up. That grimy old school wrestler type thing. You know, um, there, there's there's guys out that, that fight that way. I'll use KJ Nunes. KJ Nunes was the first fighter that ever like started talking shit to me in the cage. And it, I blew my wad right off the bat. Like my cardio, I was like, what is this guy doing? He's talking to me. It's, it was more in my mind. He wasn't saying anything. He's irritating yeah, me. Yeah, it was. It was bothering me. I'm like, what do you mean? I just kicked you in the face. And you're, you're over here. Oh, you just uh, not good enough. It almost got me out of here. No, it kind of wild me a second. Like when guys are talking like no big deal. I was like, dude, I just almost decapitated you. What the fuck are you doing? Like, you're over here talking to me like no big deal. Those things go yeah. through your mind. And I look at Darius. He doesn't. He doesn't talk trash, but it's the unorthodox, uh, unorthodoxness, I guess, of it. Uh, that is going to give someone like a young fighter, like uh, Sarukian, maybe some problems in this fight. Like if he shoots a takedown, yeah. Darius is able just to roll right out of it and get back to his feet. That's going to frustrate a young fighter. We'll have a tendency to frustrate a young fighter, I should say. We won't know until they actually fight. And yeah. you know, and then this the, the scrambles, the threats of submissions from the back, and the ability to, to make him create space by threatening those submissions. How will Sarukian deal with that? So it, it's going it to be a real, fun fight, man. See, I look at the the threat of submissions off of the takedown. Mm -hmm. That's where look. Benil's very good at setting up the Darce, the Anaconda. He's very good with the guillotine. He's got a great submission game, and it's tricky. He'll throw a ninja choke on there. He'll do all these different little things because he's got that skill set, and he's a lot better on the ground than people understand or give him credit for. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Next fight. We got Jalen Turner taking on Bobby Green. Jalen Turner doing this. Basically, on what about ten days' notice? I want to say at the most, mm -hmm. maybe a week's mm -hmm. notice. Uh, last one week replacement, Jalen Turner. Uh, they both from Southern California, both from the Inland Empire area of Riverside, San Bernardino, and uh, they've trained together. They know each other. They don't really considerably like each yeah. other, which is good because. You know, Jalen knows exactly where Bobby's good. Bobby knows where Jalen's mm -hmm. good. And we're going to see who can take advantage of it. Jalen's going to be a problem for anyone based upon that size. Well, he is huge. When people have training together, 
I think it's going to be the most exciting fight probably of the night. Usually, because they know something about they, each other. They know they know the strength. Yeah, they know the power. They know the speed. They know the reach. They they've dealt with that reach and range before. Someone like Jalen Turner, that's an that's an advantage for Bobby Green. I know that you can kick me from this far. I know that you remember this worked last time because it did work then. But guess what? I have the solution to it now. So like the, they know each other. The feeling out process is already over. And I feel like I that's why that's why trilogy fights or, you know, where you have rematches, they tend to sometimes be the better fight the next time around. It's very, you know, like uh, the uh, Dan Henderson and Shogun fight. Both fights were fantastic. Was it three fights? They fought three see, neither, None of those were they, bad. They were so. all great fights, right? Uh, you know, the Gil and I fights. Like the, after that, we trained together for two years before that fight. The very first one was one sided. The second one, I get, thought it was a great fight, but it was a little bit more one sided for him. And the, and the third third fight was 50 50. You're going to get fighters that once they've trained together and they know each other's weaknesses and their strengths, the filling out process is over. And now you're going to get the best result out of both of them. They don't, or you're going to get a total fucking just shit fight <laughs> where it, it can go both yeah. ways. You're going to get that. You're going to get yeah. that. Oh, I know he's going to do this. And, and they don't yeah. do anything. They just don't do anything. No. But I don't think this. I know. I think this is going to be action packed. I, I think it's going to end up being a great fight. I don't think Bobby Green could be in a shitty fight at this stage in his career. I think when we had him on the podcast, if you guys haven't seen that show, go back and take a look at it. It was just probably about three weeks ago. He's somebody that, look, he's trying to fight guys and motivate him. And I think the UFC knows that. You know, at the age of which he is, I think he's 36, 37. He understands what's at stake. Like, look, I want the guys that motivate me. I want the guys that get me up in the morning and make me want to stop smoking weed. Okay, I want to get there, and I want want to show up and give a, give a fight of the night type performance and win my money. And Jalen Turner coming off of his loss, but it was a very action packed, great fight, gutsy fight, gutsy gutsy, gutsy fight. fight. Could have went either way too, coming down to the end. Um, but the fact that Bobby Green was supposed to fight uh, the winner of that of his last fight against Dan Hooker that just puts him yep. right in that same conversation. Look, that fight was nose to nose. If I go out there and start you. Psh, there's no comment. I should be ranked ahead of both of you guys. So that that should be – that's a good way for him to get back into that talk of like, hey, this is where the fights are that I want to be. I would love to see Bobby Green and uh, and Michael Chandler. I don't know what it is. I think I would love to see that fight. Just – I think th his wrestling would be enough to stop Chandler's wrestling, not as if Chandler would wrestle. But I think on the feet, the way he rolls with the punches, he's got to avoid that big shot in the first round. But then after that, I think it could be a very fun fight. Very fun fight. Both both more boxing centric. Not a lot of kicks. You know, uh, both of them don't use their wrestling, even though they both can wrestle. I think it would just be a great a great stylistic matchup. It'd be a fun fight to watch. That would be an interesting fight. Uh next fight. I agree with you. Uh, we got Rob Font taking on Devinson Figueredo. This is a great matchup in the Bantamweight mm -hmm. division. Let's make sure that we understand it's a Bantamweight fight. Rob Font being a longtime Bantamweight. Devinson Figueroa being a guy that was the flyweight champion and now moving up in weight. But I think that's part of he's going to find out that, you know what, guy's a little bit stronger. Everything that worked before might not work quite the same. He's fighting a guy that's got phenomenal stand-up. Rob Font's got a lot better ground game than people give him credit for. He can handle himself on the ground. Figueroa is good on the ground. In the stand-up, I give Rob Font the advantage uh, over Figueredo mm -hmm. just in the stand-up alone. So we're going to see. I think this is a very tough matchup for Figueredo coming up into the Bantamweights. Okay. He's taken on a guy that has been very successful with a lot of top-flight Bantamweight mm -hmm. fighters. Rob Font's the real deal. Yeah, and and look, trying to be successful in the Bantamweight division is very tough these days. And you and I have oh. continued to say this. This is the most stacked division in the sport right now of MMA. Yep. The Bantamweight division is the most stacked. It has the most talent and the and the highest level of talent right now in, right. across whether it's PFL, Bellator, whatever it is, and and uh, over even in one, they've got great yeah. Bantamweights over there. And yep. obviously in the UFC. So you have across the board at 135 pounds, a stack and a plethora of great talent. And Rob Font seems to always be right in that mix. You want to know why? Because he's good. He's damn good. Damn. And so that's the thing. Damn he's good. got good takedown defense. Like you said, he's better on the ground than uh, people give him credit for. But it's where his boxing, where he makes his money and is, is in his boxing. Sure. Um, you know, Devinson Figueredo made a living, like you said, uh, at 125 pounds at being a striker. 
where he's going to have to utilize that wrestling that he's been working on with Henry Cejudo for the last probably two and a half years now. He's going to have to put that to the test. I think he's going to be able to take Rob Font down because the one thing that we've continued to always say, when you're a, when you're a guy going from 145 to 35, it's hard. I feel like it's harder because of the speed. speed. But Figueroa is going up, and I think the speed will be his advantage against Rob Font. I, if there was one advantage I'm going to say I really believe in, I do think that speed will be there. Figueroa will be able to land the one. He can't afford to land more than two or three shots. What I mean on the feet is like if he misses one or two, you can't go for three and four because Rob's going to be maybe that step right there with you or slightly ahead of you, making making you miss and making you pay because he's the better striker. So I think Figueroa has got to make sure that he's landing the big one, two, and then leading that into right into a takedown or at least some some sort of threatening of a takedown to keep Rob Font guessing. You cannot afford to go, let me throw four and five and see what happens. No, no, that's how you're going to get hit with that left hook. Fucking, you know, Carlos Condit, Dan Hardy type shit. <sighs> looking at the lights like you you know you're gonna you're gonna need to he's gonna have to mix that up every time he goes high and he gets rob font to react is when he needs to go low every time he threatens to go low and he doesn't get it, he's got to pop back up and go high and then come back down low he can't afford to be standing too much longer than say a three or four punch combination i say a one and a two maybe a three here and there if the one and two land cleanly then add the third but um the speed i think is for is going to favor figueredo the wrestling, I think, is going to favor Figueredo. I think the submission-wise is going to be about equal. I'd probably give Rob maybe a little bit of an advantage because like you told me earlier on the Yoli Fans Alive is that he's been training with Patchy Mix. There's not a better guy on the ground right now, I think, in the whole sport of MMA than him. And I, what I mean by that, let's not get it twisted. you got Rodolfo Vieira. You've got, you know, Buchecha and those guys. They're all fantastic. I think they're all the, yeah. they're great. But guess what? But they're not difference. MMA jujitsu level. You know, you've you got go. Charles Oliveira, but I think right now Apache Mix is the best hands down MMA jujitsu practitioner in the game and MMA fighter, actually. So in the Bantamweight division, but I think it's also across the board in all weight classes. He's the best jujitsu guy right now in, in the sport. Well, you know, let's talk about this for a second because people don't, they get all mixed up. There's a difference between jujitsu with a gi and no gi jujitsu. And mm -hmm. MMA grapples. Yes. <clears throat> Huge difference. And that's where you can take a look at Buchecha. Uh, look at Buchecha is a monster on the ground. Mm -hmm. But you've seen him in one FC where he's at. And he's had times when guys that aren't near as good on the ground Close. but can stay with him based upon this is what getting punched does. This is what getting exhausted does. When you're exerting, you know, energy out because you're tight in areas and stuff like that, it's completely different. When you get a guy like Patchy Mix that, in an MMA fight, he can make anything work, as far as the grappling arts and the way he does it and the way he goes about it. There's there's a system to each one. There's a system to the gi. There's a system to no gi. And there's a system to MMA grappling, and MMA grappling wise. I don't think anyone touches. Him I right agree. Now. I agree. Uh, but I, like I said, Rob Font is a better grappler than people give him credit for, like you said. And then yeah. Figueredo, Figueredo with his wrestling with uh, Henry Cejudo, I think is going to be a key factor. Now, how can he hold Rob Font down? Will he be able to do that? Will Rob Font be able to utilize the jiu-jitsu that Patchy Mix? Patchy Mix got some of the best guillotines, arming guillotines, darces, anacondas. Japanese neckties, he can threaten ninja chokes, the front rear naked. He can hit that shit from anywhere. Now, that's his body style, but I think that if Fig Rob Font close to the body yes. style, and if Figueredo puts Whoa. his head in the wrong position, trying to utilize this wrestling takedowns that he's gotten from Henry, if he makes one mistake, he's not a Henry Sudo. He's just getting the into this process of, hey, I'm two and a half, three years into being a wrestler under Henry. If I leave my head in the wrong spot, you could be prepared for Rob Font to take that neck. Be prepared because Apache Mix is one of the best in the game. The I sorry, the best in the game at taking necks. So yep. all right. Hold next up. fight. All right, we got Sean Brady coming off of his very first loss. He's 15 and one now. Taking on Kelvin Gaslam. This is a fight that was supposed to happen a couple of times. Kind of got put us to the side by both individuals, you know, but this is a great matchup. Sean Brady is phenomenal as far as his cardiovascular, his ability to push the pace. 
and so is Kelvin Gaslam. But the question is, this is at welterweight, not at middleweight, where Kelvin Gaslam has fought most of his career. He's gone back to the 170s, kind of like, you know, he's trying to start it, you know, and couldn't make weight a lot of times, missed weight, stayed at 185, had a, you know, phenomenal run up to the championship. But the question is, does he have the same cardio at 170 that he had at 185? We're going to find out, does the cut kill him or is it an easy cut based upon preparing yourself the right way? We're going to find out, but this is a great match. I think in a three-round fight, Kelvin's got natural cardio to go three rounds. Um, I also think that you're dealing with Sean Brady, who sure he fights at a good pace, but he's not fighting at a rapid pace. He'll stand on the outside. He'll utilize his boxing. He will try to get the takedowns, try to control the top position. You know, he's not fighting in a, like, like at a 125 pound pace, <laughs> it's not no. two little ferrets on the ground getting it after it. You know what I mean? Like they're they're going to have some exchanges in the wrestling department. They're going to have some exchanges on the feet, but um, but I'm looking at Sean, you know, looking to utilize his stand up to get himself close enough into the clinch, try to get this fight to the ground and work his jujitsu. Kelvin Gaslam's going to look to sprawl and brawl, keep this thing on the feet, utilize his boxing. It's going to be whoever can implement their game plan at the, at the best. Like what Sean Brady are we going to see? Because he hasn't fought what's been almost two years, I think, something like that, a year and a half, somewhere around there. It's been a while. It's been that long since he's fought, since his loss to Bilal Muhammad. And then you've got um, Kelvin Gaslam, who was supposed to fight, coming down to 170. He is getting a little bit, I wouldn't say older, but he is older now, uh, trying to make that weight. He's matured, though, as an athlete. He understands what's important, I think, and he's making he's made those changes. 32 years old, Kelvin Gaslam. This is about that age where you're like, look, I've got two years of my prime left. I want to make sure I make a run at this and uh, get to that title. Um, I also think he sees those guys at 185 seem to be getting bigger and bigger. You know, it's like, geez, this is not going well for me as I get older. So I think at 170, he's never been a big 185 pounder. He can make the 170. He's matured as a person, as a fighter. I think he knows what's at stake. A big win over Sean Brady puts him right back into that conversation of, hey, one more fight, maybe two, and I can get a talk about maybe a title shot. You must not be mistaken. Yeah. UFC loves Kelvin Gaslam. They love him. How he's not. He's a fun fighter. He he's he he shows up every single time and gives it his all, and he brings it. He brings that fight and that action every time he gets in that cage. And we and I were talking about this on the OnlyFans uh, live stream. If you didn't love him before, like I didn't love him before. But I love him after that Izzy fight. And how do you not love a guy who's underweight for 185, fighting a guy who was the champ, or he currently wasn't wasn't the champ at the time, was he? No, yeah. wasn't the champ at the no, time. That was, uh, Whitaker was. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't the champ at the time. Then comes around, and I mean, they find a guy who's 6'3", 6'4", in Izzy, world-class kickboxer, stands and bangs with him, wrestles him a little bit, but stands and bangs with him, knocked down, drag out. What a damn fight. If you're not a fan of him after that, then you don't know what the fucking sport you're watching. Go watch tennis. No. Go watch tennis. Okay? <laughs> that was, in all honesty, that fight fits within, mm. yeah, I don't know what, it, I could say top five, but at least the top Absolutely. 10 UFC's ever mm. had. It's that good. And that much heart back and forth, both yeah. guys. Just an incredible performance. Yeah, just so we're clear, though, we put, like, Dan Henderson and Shogun. That's all three fights going to one. You can't put, like, that can't be fight one, two, and three. That takes up too much room. Just that trilogy <laughs> takes up one spot, okay? <laughs> that could be, like, number That's two enough. and three. Yeah. All right, next fight. Oh, we have Clay Guida coming out against Joaquin Silva. You know, Clay Guida, he's just, he's timeless. He fought you long yeah. so long ago. It's crazy. Well, I like to take credit for his but, career because had he not beat me, he would never went to the UFC. <laughs> this is true. This is true. So I'll take but credit you for talk it. About, you talk about one hell of a career, mm -hmm. though, and a guy who is just you know, living off of just toughness, a wrestling base that he's relentless, and just weaponizing uh, cardiovascular. He has been just remarkable. One of the nicest guys you could meet. One of the, you know, just a true, true classy guy. And uh, go ahead. Well, like, <laughs> what's what's the word classy mean to you? Because I don't think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> no, it means class, He's a really good guy, guy that, though. 
Look, he's a dog yeah. in the cage. He's a yeah. dog, and he'll do anything to win. Okay? And I always said, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. Oh, yeah. Okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but outside of that cage, that's a dude that'll give you the shirt off his back. He will help you with anything. He is just a good human being. I love him. He's he's a crazy fisherman, yeah. too. So. You could take him and, and Gregor Gillespie, put them together, and you would have a great fishing show. We, we, uh, you know, we had a little. I don't know. I wouldn't say we. I was just me. I had a little grudge against him because I felt like he cheated in our fight with the grease and the hair, and then I felt like there was grease <laughs> in his beard and all this other stuff. Uh, you know, but it, this was this was kind of that Diego Sanchez. Remember that Diego Sanchez time where he was putting all the shit in his yeah. hair, and guys that were fighting him were like, "What the fuck?" It was around that same exact time where people were using hair product in their hair. Before they yeah, fought, it just became slippery. Yeah, because it's as it as they walk in, their hair is dry and yes. stiff, actually yeah. stiff. You know, and it's but as they sweat, it becomes really yep. slick. Yep. And so uh, that rub, that rubbed me wrong, the wrong, the wrong way. But for years, I was holding that <laughs> grudge, and that's more on me than it was on him because he probably didn't even fucking care. I know he didn't care, but <laughs> I don't think we, he did. Uh, but then we ran into each other in San Jose at one of our Bellator events, and uh, him and I had sat down and talked and. You know, I, I've always felt like, especially at, like towards the end when I was retiring, I was like, man, you don't have the energy to hold like grudges against people. Like if you ever see this guy, just talk to him. So I walked right up to him. He was yelling my name across the bar. He was like, hey, what's up? I was like, hey, what's up? So we went up and hashed it out and uh, we talked for a couple of hours that night. And, uh, you know, and, and um, he wasn't drinking. I know I got some great pictures. Yeah, there. that's right. That's right. You're a great cameraman. <laughs> yeah. But he's, he, you are right, John. He is a great guy. When you say classy, I'm like thinking to myself of a suit and tie and, you know, nice loafers. No, no, that's not it. That's a not A suit him. and tie doesn't make no, you no, classy. He, he, he's, got, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got the Tommy Bahama shirt, maybe. That's classy to him. So, but overall, great guy, great person. I feel like this fight, though, was set up. Dana White's getting... Get, yes. getting irritated with him over that whole like I want to almost like the fake taking his gloves yeah off. taking his gloves off faking like he was gonna retire and then just wished his friend a happy birthday that his, his mom. mom sorry and he got his yeah. Dana White you could tell was pissed off about it he talked about it on the post press oh, conference yes. he was irritated yep. this fight here shows that to me that this is like an f you from Dana White you did me dirty on that yeah. shit don't do that shit again he said that lie you know, he said that don't do that don't do that shit that's annoying. So I think this, this is a tough fight for, for Clay. Clay is getting older. He's getting slower. He's a little bit more hittable. He's yeah. always been hittable, but he's a little bit more hittable now because the wrestling is not yeah, what it used true. to be. Um, but this is going to be a tough fight for him. If he can get the win, that's great for him. But, I mean, it's going to be a very tough fight for him. Yeah. Next fight. All right. This fight right here, you're talking about Punalehi Soriano mm -hmm. against D Dustin Stolfus. Mm -hmm. I like Dustin Stolfus. Good, solid wrestler, tough dude. He is going up against one of the heaviest hitters there is in the sport of MMA right now, especially when you're talking about the middleweight division. Dude, Punalehi Soriano can swat. He has got power in both hands, and he will put your lights out immediately if you make a mistake. So we're going to... Look at Dustin Stolfus. Do not go out there making mistakes. Take your time. Be precise and draw this thing out. Because the one thing we have seen with Soriano is he can get tired, mm -hmm. and the cardio can become something. Not that he's, it's you know he's dropping off the 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 cliff, but he just slows down and the output slows mm -hmm. down. So very important for Stolfus to be able to implement the wrestling that he usually brings into the cage. Uh, is there any other fights on here you want to talk about? I just want to give uh, a lot of love to Misha Tate and say, hey, good luck. Wish you the very <laughs> best, and uh, hopefully you get it done. And uh, I love seeing what you're doing. I love I follow her on Instagram. Uh, we chat every once in a while, but it's like, hey, just want to wish you luck. Nothing but the best. I see you putting in the work and getting, getting into that grind. Absolutely. So best of luck. Good luck to Misha Tate. I will say that Joe Selecki mm -hmm. against Dracar Close is going to be a very good fight. That's going to be an interesting fight. Selecki got his hands full. Yes, car he close. He's gonna just. He's just got to. Car close can. Bang. He can bang. He's just gotta just not get over, like zealous, like he did against um, uh, uh, Benil. He's got to be yep, very careful about like, hey, when I rock you, pick and choose my shots. Don't wing even wider. Don't open up too much. 
Just touch yeah. you. Just touch you. So you rocked him. Go touch the him again. The knockout will don't, happen. Don't, don't sit there and open yourself I up. I think uh, Close is going to have a, a good night. It's going to be a tough fight, though. Tough fight. But fun fight for yeah. us at home. All right. Well, hey, that's going to wrap up our UFC talk. And uh, before we move on, go to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne In. We just did a live uh, show about uh, 30, oh, sorry, 40 minutes ago. That's on 40 there. 40 minutes ago. So if you guys want to go out there and check it out, it's on OnlyFans.com slash Wayne In. John and I joined with them. We are the very first podcast that they have ever worked with and decided to sponsor and work with. They're trying to get a lot more uh, sports products on their um, on their platform. I wouldn't say they're moving away from what they do, but they're just trying to get more integrated in what we do in the sport of MMA in the in all sports in general. They've got they sponsor Formula One. Uh, they sponsor uh, big time. What's it called? Uh, motocross. They sponsor several MMA fighters. You got Chris Seibel, or you got Michael Venom Page. You got AJ McKee. You got Charles Oliveira. They are all on there. Luke Rockhold, uh, AJ McKee. I said already, but they've, all these fighters are on there. You can follow them, get a little extra content out of them on there, and it's directly related to you and them. They're not going to have a ton of subscribers on their uh, OnlyFans, so this gives you more opportunity to actually get in touch with them and actually try to get uh, your questions answered by them directly. So. Head on over to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne In. Subscribe to us over there for free. We don't charge for our content over there. We just want you guys to enjoy what we put up there. Uh, let's go right ahead and get into BKFC. Dude, they have got one heck of a show coming up December 2nd. I mean, their main event is in the sport of bare knuckle boxing. This could be one of those fights that everyone goes back to because both of these guys are of the, you know, just bite down on your mouthpiece and wing shots mentality. They're both dogs. Mike Perry, the champion, going up against Eddie Alvarez. I love this mm -hmm. fight, man. I just think it's going to be spectacular. What's going to be spectacular about it, though, John? What's going to be spectacular is this. First off, it's two-minute rounds, Josh. So that's the one thing in bare knuckle is, look, it's a sprint. And Eddie is a guy who sets his feet and, and wing shots. And Perry is a guy that walks through shots. Take a look at his fight against Venom Page. Look at Venom Page just hit him with everything. And he just kept walking mm -hmm. forward. He just kept coming. He's got the mentality of the dog that, hey, you can put me out. You, you can knock me out. But you're going to have to do it because I'm going to walk you down to land my strikes and I don't think you can take them. And I look at Eddie Alvarez, Eddie's got he's got good technical boxing. He is a, a good stand-up fighter and he's got that dog in him too. He will bite down. I always see someone whenever Eddie is fighting and he's fighting someone good, he gets knocked down. But he always gets up and he gets his butt back into the fight and he somehow comes out on top of it. And I just look at this as this has got to be a great matchup because both guys come forward. And when both guys come forward and neither one's a real counter fighter, they both like to be that offensive starter, the guy that goes after it. I just think this is going to be a phenomenal fight. Mike Perry has found his home. I mean, this is what oh, I feel like he was. He was born he, for exactly, this. Exactly. took the words right out of my mouth. And then Eddie Alvarez. I mean, he, look, the story of his career He's always been the smaller guy. I mean, in, until he got yeah. to the lightweight division. But even when he was in the lightweight division, there was guys that like were considered to be bigger than him, you know. And when he was fighting, remember he was fighting with Bodog. He was fighting at one seventy, and then yeah, he fought Nick Thompson. Yeah, but that was his first loss. Yeah, that was his first loss. But those guys were a lot bigger than him. But he was still out there oh. gunslinging it and getting after yep. it. Um, look, so look him fighting Mike Perry, who is the bigger fighter, but they'll both weigh in yep. at the same. Height wise, body frame wise, that all belongs to Mike Perry. Power wise, belongs to Mike Perry. The actual technical ability to box will belong to Eddie Alvarez. But John, this is not a technical boxing match as we've seen in bare knuckle no, fighting. This is whoever can get to whose chin first. And Mike Perry is has the ability to walk through shots and put his own shots on you. I guess for me, I was like, when I was looking back at the fight with Chad Mendez and Eddie Alvarez, I was like, man, Chad dropped you. But then again, I also oh, yeah. go, 
there was everyone like, oh, he's so fast. smart. He's so Chad. fast. So, so fast. And that's where Mike Perry, he's fast too. I think he's going to still not be as fast, not, not, anywhere, close. not anywhere close as fast as, as Chad. No, not even in the yeah. same atmosphere. But he, I think he's still probably equally or a little bit faster than, than Eddie because Eddie is getting up there in age. So the boxing belongs to Eddie. But this is not a boxing match. This is a dog fight. This is a... Yeah, this is this a dog is a, fight. This is what we talked about when Mike Perry fought Luke Rockwell. Yeah. Is, hey, Luke, is a he's a technical mm-hmm. fighter. Bare knuckle boxing is about the dog. Yeah. And it really is. And that's, what, that's why it's catching on. That's why people love it when they're watching it because it's exciting. Yeah. The dog walks forward and continues to bite. Mm-hmm. And that's what Mike Perry does. This shit makes my nipple hard just talking about it. It's it's a, it's fun, man. It's fun. It's fun to like. I I'm really intrigued by all of this. I really am. You know, um, I'm a big fan of Eddie. Man, Eddie and I were scheduled or talked about fighting a couple of times. Once in Bodog, once in uh, Dream. You know, and um, there was a little talk of whether he stayed in in uh, Bellator. That that would be like you know. Uh, a fight that I would have would have potentially have gotten all those things, you know. I know he left before I got there, but it was like, you know, there was a lot of times that we were yep. supposed to cross paths and uh, and potentially fight. So I don't know, man. Like I, it's going to be a tough fight. I'm going to give the edge a little bit to to Perry because, like I said, he was born for this. So was Eddie, but the age gives me a little bit of an issue. On top of that, is that Mike Perry is slightly the bigger fighter, the more naturally weighted fighter. Um, no, no doubt about it. Look uh, at the weight that they're going to be, which is you know, five. Yeah. I mean, that's Mike Perry is, is just a bigger frame mm-hmm. than Eddie, you know, and it's, I, it is a problem when you look at it, but Eddie can do yeah. it. He's done it in the past. He is tough. He is tough as nails, man. So. Hey, when you guys are there listening and watching that fight, I want to turn off the volume when he's fighting because his wife will be making some noise. Eddie Alvarez. <laughs> She'll be screaming, man. That's what she does. Oh, that's all. Next good. fight. We got Big Ben Rothwell taking on Todd Duffy. And uh, God damn, you, again, you talk about a guy. Rothwell is a, well, I want to say living zombie mm-hmm. when it comes to his fighting because he just walks forward and takes abuse to. To, to hand out his abuse and uh he's a big man and you know when he's you can figure in their championship thing here he's not cutting weight you know there is no oh he has to come in at 265 ben roswell's a 285 pound guy and he's gonna walk mm-hmm. into 285 todd duffy is a 255 pound guy 260 maybe in this he's definitely gonna be the smaller guy and he has definitely got to use his footwork and speed to hit angles, hit Ben, hit, go to the body, hurt him to the body, and get out. Not an easy thing to do against Rothwell. Rothwell is going to use that weight. He's going to grab hole. He's going to dirty box, which is allowed in BKFC. So interesting matchup, but not an easy task for Todd Duffy. Look, I think fighting someone like Ben is going to be hard enough no matter what. <laughs> and then fighting him where he's already had two fights in a sport you've never fought in. That's going to be tough. You, you don't really understand yeah. the the way that that feels to get hit bare the knuckle new, in the face. Also, also, the nuances of what you're allowed to yeah. do compared to what you've done in the yeah. past. You know, it's different and it's not boxing. Yeah, I look at I look at what Mike Perry was able to do. What is he three and oh, but his last fight was against Luke Crockle. That was his third fight. This is Ben Rothwell's third fight. That experience in there makes it already feel like home. And Luke comes in, yeah. was like, Man, I didn't expect it to be like that. Well, Todd Duffy's coming in. Todd trains at AK. I know Todd very well. He's been in AK forever. <clears throat> um, this can be this can be a tough fight for him, a really tough fight. He's got to mix it up. He can't afford to get in big exchanges um right off the bat. When we talk about Mike Perry being tailor made for this, I feel like Ben Rothwell is tailor made for this sport. This is like his sport. He's always been oh, kind yeah. of a walk you down, snap the jab. You know, like then when you get close, when I snap the jab, I leave it out there and clinch the head and uppercut you. That's his style of fighting, and that's tailor made yeah. for for bare knuckle and what this hey, what you can do. And he doesn't have to worry about anyone taking no. him down. 
It's all gone. Yeah, you can't knee me. You can't head kick me. You can't kick my legs. All you got to do is just grab you by the head and just box your ears off. Yeah. So we're going to find out. Next fight. It's perfect for him. Ah, we got Ferreira against Rawlings. This is a rematch for the championship. This was a great match the first time, and Beck Rawlings got stopped on cuts. Mm. But this should be an outstanding championship fight. You know what's funny is, like, you look at Beck Rawlings. She's almost like in a Mike Perry situation where, like, she wasn't able to do what she wanted to do or get it done in the cage for MMA. Yep. But damn, she's come back into into BKFC and she's just automatically right there in that that conversation of title where she left she left BKFC as the champ. She left as the champion. And came That's to right. Bellator, had a had That's a win right. in her first fight. I think she dropped two after that. And then, you yep. know, just kind of went her way. And then now she's back here. Um, you know, doing her thing. I I'm looking. I think she's another one that's just made for this. This is her sport. Like, what what are we living our life in denial for? Just grab the <laughs> shit by the horns, man, and call it what it is. You're yeah. you're a BKFC fighter. That's what you are. And so is Faria. Oh, absolutely. She's freaking just you know she was in MMA and she's okay, mm -hmm. but she has found her calling because she's so aggressive in these fights that. A lot of women cannot stay with mm -hmm. her based upon that aggression. You got to be able to put put shots on yeah. her. Rawlings can put the shots on her. Can she do it before she gets damaged to the point where they stop the fight, which is what happened in that first one? John, is there any other fights on here you want to talk about? No, nah, this is good. We're good. Do you go. have the Jeremy Stevens and Rivera fight? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Stevens got some power. Rivera, not a big guy. Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy's not a big no. guy. You know, it's, yeah. I look at this, but Jeremy's slowing God. down a little bit. Rivera's still, you know, he's still got speed in his hands. But Jimmy Rivera used to live off of being able to wrestle. take you yeah. down and wrestle, and that was always a threat that he used to land his, you know, stand up game. Jeremy Stevens has always been what he mm -hmm. is. He's a guy that bangs. He's a guy that comes to throw his hands. He still has he, the power is not going to leave. The speed has gone a little bit. Let's just be honest. You know, he's he's getting up in age. But Jeremy Stevens is just tough as hell. And so the fact that he doesn't have to worry about someone taking him down. He did good in, in regular boxing. I think this will lend itself better to his style of fighting. I look and say speed wise. It might go to Rivera, but power wise, it's going to go to Jeremy. He's yeah, got the more power. I agree. And so you bring in as they get inside, how smart does each guy fight? When you get into the clinch, what do you hit with? You know, how do you utilize, you know, a, a single collar tie to bring the uppercuts? To how much do you go to the body? The guy that goes to the body the most in this fight is going to win. God, I hate hitting to the body. Fucking hurts my, <laughs> especially with hurts knuckles. my knuckles. Yeah, I got soft, <laughs> wussy hands. <laughs> Maybe BKFC isn't for me. Ah, Maybe no, but you know what? Yeah, I feel like I got the itch, brother. Anyways, just for that, though, just for that. Maybe a boxing match. All right, hey, that's going to wrap up our BKFC talk. And uh, Dave's got a lot of news. A lot of news. You know what I also, wait, before we even move on to that, you know what I also like? Take a look. If you guys look at the BKFC website, look at the top right corner when you're checking the card out. You've got OnlyFans as one of their biggest sponsors is basically trying to reach out to all of the MMA uh, talent and the fans and letting them know, hey, we have content available on OnlyFans.com slash weighing in. So check out all the MMA content you guys can get. We do uh, work with Very them, nice. so check it out over there. All right, Dave, there's a lot of fun stuff for us to chat about today. A lot, a lot of fun uh, stuff for us to chat yeah, about? Yeah, like this right here. <laughs> um, like yeah, this so right here. This one's making the rounds. It's um, it's a screenshot from the Nelk Boys Full Send podcast. Mm -hmm. They had Dana White on. They just came back after a layoff of the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, they brought Dana on for their kind of comeback show. And um, they did a little backstage kind of thing at the start where they had Dana coming into the building. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like an off, like offset thing. And then they followed Dana in. But as they were following Dana in, like the camera tilted a couple of times. And you saw the boards that Dana always does where he talks about the fights. Um, I did watch this and it was kind of hard. I mean, you had to really 
probably pause and zoom in at the exact right moments here. Looks so like someone did that. I'm not, I mean, it looks like someone did. <laughs> just a little and, bit, yeah. And this did make the rounds, but I just don't know how, how authentic mm -hmm. it is, so I just want to prepare. Well, on the video, there was also like Jalen Turner was up at the top facing somebody else. That fight obviously is probably not going to happen now that Jalen Turner is fighting, you know, this weekend. Um, John, you and I have been calling this out for a while. MVP, yeah. he, he was not released. His time was expiring. He was letting his uh, non-compete um, and exclusive Fly negotiation by. rights yeah. go by, which I think is about 90 days, maybe 120. I Normally, it's a 90-day period. 90. Yeah, and so yeah. then that was letting go. And then, you know, and this makes sense. I, I would have liked to have seen him fight somebody else besides Kevin Holland. I would like to have seen him fight somebody a little bit higher up in the rankings. But it is what it is. I understand that the Kevin Holland fight, Kevin Holland fight would be a fun fight. I didn't even have Kevin Holland yeah. on my radar. I had, I've no, always just had not, Steven not Thompson. That That's all I've ever had on this when it came to this fight. I agree. But, uh, but Kevin Holland actually makes for a fun fight. No, it's a great fight. And if you, if this fight happens, Kevin Holland's got the length to at least match up mm. with Michael Venom yeah. page. They're both super long, super tall. He's going to have a hard time with the style of Venom page. And the one thing of, of Kevin Holland is he's not a great wrestler. He's he's a great great ground grappler, but his wrestling's not going to be good enough to take Page down. Page has worked himself into being able to stop guys that wrestle like Holland. Well, well, John, John here here's the next thing. Go back and watch the fight with Stephen Thompson, and in the first round between rounds one and two, what did he tell his corner? He said. Damn, that guy's fast. He's not. He yeah, said, he, he said he's not old. Wait till he gets a load of fucking MVP and his speed. Yep. yep. I mean, people that have fought him was like, I've never fought somebody that fast in my life. It's like, yep. it, it was frightening. They said it was frightening to fight someone that fast. Yeah. It's, it, all of a sudden, the video game that you're so used mm -hmm. to with the, the speed element, all of a sudden, someone kicked it up three notches and that's. It's at an entirely different yeah. pace and speed. And it's like, whoa, uh, how is he covering that yeah. much distance? That fast? I'll give you an example. And Imagine being in the little league and the guy's throwing the pitch. And then all of a sudden you go right to be in the pros. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the yeah. speed difference of, of a lot of like from MVP to a lot of the other fighters. Just yeah. it's that big of a speed difference. You're like, oh shit, this guy's throwing. 70 miles an hour oh wait go to the pros 100 105 108 102 that ball just 98 snaps. yeah just whap. you're like the first time i've ever had i had somebody that was a pro and um he he threw the ball and i just went what the f i just was so afraid i almost wanted to get out of the way thinking it was going to hit me and it was only because it was traveling so fast at me i couldn't even tell no, the, if it was like in the lane the, of hitting me the best part is, what was the sound like? Because that's Whap! the part that gets you. It was. You just hear it. You hear this sizzle. Oh. There's an actual sizzle. Got it. And, a yeah. and it's like, hold it. Did that go by me? I didn't see it. <laughs> There's a video yes. of a female who's catching her boyfriend. I think it's her boyfriend. And he's, a, I don't know if he's a pro or if he's a call it, but man, I was surprised that she was able to catch him. He was, and not to take anything away from her, but you could just tell she was like, I can only handle like 10 to 15 throws. And then after that, I'm done. Well, it makes sense. It makes sense. But I'm like, damn, you could just hear it goes. It's like. Thwap. I was like, oh man, that's just crazy. The speed of Michael Venom page is going to be a problem. If he thought, if he thought 40 year old Steven Thompson was fast. Yeah. It's going to be a little nasty. All right. We're going to find out if he utilizes that wrestling. But it'll that be interesting. I, I actually like the matchup. I, I think it's a great matchup. Fun fight. Fun fight. Yeah. A little bit of the trash talk back and forth, too. Then we're going to get into it at the oh, way yeah, in. They both. I think, I think on, they know what they're doing. UFC knows what they're doing when it comes to that fight. Yes, they do. You know. All right. Next. Next. All right. And that same podcast. Dana White uh, was talking about the Chandler Connor situation. They were asking about Connor fighting next year. Mm -hmm. And um, Dana basically said um, that Chandler can sit and wait for Connor because he's making good money now. And he was like, <laughs> one of the things he said is like, um, you know, people like to complain about fighter pay and all that other shit. Uh, you don't see these guys hurrying up to fight. John Jones takes off 
for years Chandler can hang out and wait for Connor when you think about Chandler Chandler was fighting for Bellator right uh, now Chandler can just sit around and take his time and wait for Connor however long it takes so these guys are all good in positions where they can wait for the right time right fight okay, I got one word for that <laughs> <laughs> Do do me a favor. Pull up Derek Brunson's comment mm. after his one fight in the PFL. Yeah. Okay, and that'll tell you the way guys look. Well, at Corey this. Anderson. All right, Corey Anderson. Corey Anderson going to Bellator. Bill Davis. That will tell you what really is happening. I'm, yeah. When you sit there and you bring up the top guys, because Michael, you know Chandler, he can sit there and say, you know, what did he say something about? You know, fucking Bellator, right? Fucking Bellator was paying Michael Chandler big money. He, Go ahead. He, they, no. I, I, how do I word this? This, this right here. Because you know what he was making in Soto. Yeah, I, we do know. And I'm not gonna say. No, no. But, but the thing is, is Bellator had the chance to match this. Sure. They, they and they decided they chose not to. And why? Because he just got knocked out by their 145 pounder. Hello. He got knocked out by their featherweight champion. He was not a champion. He was costing a ton yeah. of money. And he was how old? Yeah, 35, 30, right? 34, 34 35, 35 years yeah. of age. It's like, okay, what is the upside of paying yeah. Michael Chandler now more money? Yeah. Let's let Michael Chandler go and let's sign a bunch of young talent. They did that. Yeah. And their lightweight, their lightweight talent pool is way, way better well, now. It, it was way better. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, and nothing against Michael Chandler. No. Look, he's, he was fun to watch. He was a three-time champion there. He's a great guy. But to sit there and to say, oh, they're making enough money, they don't have to. Well, he's right. Michael Chandler doesn't have to fight anymore. He's made a lot of money through his fighting career, some of that with the UFC, some of that with Bellator. But it's not like, Oh, the UFC is paying all these guys so much money mm. that they don't have to worry about ever fighting and stuff. Yeah, you're, he's using the oh. wrong person. Like you, he said, Conor McGregor. Yes. I mean, Conor's um, worth four, four to six hundred million dollars. Like it doesn't matter what the fuck he does. Conor doesn't have to fight yeah. Yeah. ever. So there's that. The Chandler situation. Chandler was making a lot of money before his first. He was making a lot of money before this last contract was even negotiated. So the one that they ended up releasing him or letting him go on, they just said, hey, we're not going to match. I'm not going to say they released yeah. him because that's not true. The was is they decided not to match and they said, hey, we're going to move on. And the conversation was obviously yeah. that, look, it's hard for us to say that he's one of the best lightweights in the world anymore, that he got knocked out by a 145 pound champ. That, that just made, it made sense. And when you put it that way, yes, it's it like, did. look, I can't say that he's one of the best guys in the world or the best 155 pounders now in the world. If he becomes my champion when he lost to my 145 pound champion. And I understood the, the, the reasoning behind that. That's just, I understood it. And once it was put to me that way, I'm like, okay, let him go. Now, if he becomes champ over there in the UFC, it just makes us look a little bit better. That's one thing. And two yeah. is like, even if he doesn't become champs, we know what kind of fighter Michael Chandler is. He's going to make them, he's going to make them have fun fights. And that, that's what he's going to do. He's going to bring action. Yeah. He's going to do all those things. And good for him. That's the way he fights, and that's uh, that's going to be entertaining, and it's still going to reflect well on what where he came from, which is you know where he spent the majority of his career, made a lot of his own money. Um, I think what would separate the pay for him a little bit differently is, um, he didn't get pay per view points because he was never the champion when he fought for the titles. So he just showed up and he fought. He got his purse. I do know that his purse was significant uh, because. Uh, Bellator decided not to match it, and I knew what it was. But he was making around that before he his in his previous contract, right. so it went yeah. up a little bit um, for the second one, and decided not to match. Good on him though. Like, look, he's waiting around. And I think he should. You know, he's taken a lot of damage in his last you know five six fights. It's good for him to to let his brain well, waiting rest. around is not going to hurt. No, him. not at all. Not at all. You know, and if anything is letting his body heal up, letting his brain heal up. You know, and uh, maybe in this short period of time where he's able to have some time off, his coaches can get through to him to start using some fight IQ. Uh, but we'll find out when he, when he decide, if, <laughs> yeah, when he we'll does decide out. to fight, if he fights anytime soon. 
Um, I don't think that we've said constantly. I don't think that the Connor fight's gonna gonna happen. Nope. I still don't. I think if Connor has to choose between Nate Diaz and uh, un- yeah, Nate Diaz Michael and Chandler. Michael Chandler, he's gonna take Nate Diaz. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, all right, next thing. Uh, another uh, comment from that podcast was just throwing the pay-per-views. They were asked about, um, Dana was asked about Dylan Dynas potentially coming over <laughs> to the UFC and he kind of put it back on the the guys interviewing him and said, well, do you want to see him there? And uh, they said, well, it was just, you know, it was reported that he did big pay-per-view numbers and Dana, Dana's comments about the pay-per-view numbers were as follows. I haven't heard about anybody selling a lot of pay-per-views lately. Let me tell you how hard it is to sell 1.3 million pay-per-views, which is the number yeah. that was given by Prime. And if you sell 1.3 million, if you sold 700,000 pay-per-view buys, they'd put uh, they'd put putting on they'd be putting on fights fucking 10 times a year. When you hear those kinds of numbers fly around the pay-per-view world, uh, they're lying motherfuckers. Don't believe that <laughs> shit. Okay? I think he's telling the truth. He is still I think he's telling the truth. You know? But he's talking about somebody else's promotion. Yeah. And he knows numbers because he gets numbers all the time. And he knows what the numbers were. He's not putting it out, but he knows what the number is. John, it wasn't even fucking close to 1.3. No. Come it wasn't on. even close. I, I don't even think it broke 250. It, I don't think it broke 150. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. Yeah. No, no, I'm saying I would agree with you. I would agree with you. Yeah, I mean, I'm being generous. I mean, like, but here's the thing. <laughs> Is Dylan, he, he heard those numbers and he ran for his release. Got his release by Bellator. And Smartest thing ever. <laughs> for, for who? <laughs> uh You'll have to well, figure that out. I think out. for Dylan, right? Smartest yeah, thing. I mean, I think both PFL and Bellator are probably, they're just like, okay, look, we're good. We'll shake, wash our hands of it, move yeah. on. Call it what it is. But look, if, first if he, off, he, he, all right, here's the thing the UFC has got a, a, an incredible amount of talent under contract. True? Yeah. 650 to 700 fighters. The real difference is anymore, you can look at a lot of the people. It used to be that every, just about everybody you looked at who was under contract with the USC, you go, dude, that dude's a stud. Mm. Eh, that girl's a stud. Yeah. You know, that guy, man, you know what? He can fight. And now, based and some of it's based off of the Dana White contender series, but they have a lot of people that have, you know, 3-0 and records, 4-0 and records. And you look and you go, he's got a lot of holes in his game that he's he, he's he's gonna take some time you know he's gonna end up finding someone real quick when they decide to put it on him he's gonna get it put on mm-hmm. him and <laughs> dylan danis would be that guy i look at uh the he's young kid honest. what's his name rojas jr i look at yeah. him i'm like okay look he's a fantastic Talented. grappler he's got great cardio but he would have never been in yeah. the ufc back when i first started in the ufc no would have never been there we had we had seven yeah. to ten shows a year, like we. Yeah. There's just it just didn't. You wouldn't have signed someone like him, and nothing against him. Couldn't. I think he's talented. No, couldn't. He's got mm-hmm. talent, but he's got so much to learn. Uh-huh. You know, and and to sit there and to learn it up there against you know, you can try to find fights for him and stuff. Mm-hmm. You go, okay, I think this is a fight he can win. But when you're the matchmaker and you're having to figure out who can I put against this person at this time. To give it a good mm-hmm. show, but I think this guy's going to be the ones who win. That's what matchmakers do all the time. But there comes a point where you can't do it anymore. Yeah. And you guys say, I got to put him against someone real. Yeah. And then when that person hasn't had enough of the experience for fighting where they're at now, it's tough. Yeah. And it's tough. And it's like, you know, you, you, Dylan Dennis is a, had a, you know, phenomenal success with jujitsu he was good he talks about you know oh he beat everybody no he didn't let's just be honest that's a lie but in bellator he had two easy fights okay mm-hmm. the, the second one he got into some trouble with it but you know he always got himself out based upon the ground 
and he was able to get two submission victories, but it's not like he fought top flight talent. Yeah. And if he went to the UFC, it all depends on do they want to take him and give him fights that he can win? Okay, uh, that's what Bellator did. But I don't think they would, and I think they would get him lit up. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But I look at guys like, look, AJ McKee, they they built him for his first three or four fights, and they said, okay, look, now we're going to take the reins off. Then we had him oh, fight yeah, Brian yeah. Moore. Brian Moore gave him a fucking dog fight. You know what I mean? And then he grew out of that fight and went in to be something sure. you know even more special. You know, um, Lucas Brennan. You know, his last fight, he had to dig deep in oh. that fight. He was getting his ass kicked by Very Weber deep. Almeida. And he was able to yep. pull off the knee knockout and beautifully done. Um, there's fighters that have done that Bellator has worked with. And um, I've seen it. I've seen it through how Scott Coker does business and how he does these things. And I've seen other promotions kind of do the same thing. You're seeing it with the UFC. <laughs> Rojas Jr. Bellator was trying to do it with Aaron Pico. You know, Pico just had too yep. many, too many well, out- accolades because people didn't want to fight him because they were expecting him to be this world burner the way that people were talking about him. So he had no choice but to fight up in level of competition, which wasn't fair to him, being that he was just sure he was a great wrestler. He had some boxing, but we're talking Golden Gloves boxing. We're not talking fucking Andre Ward boxing. So we, we, did, him, we did him a disservice, and we allowed him to, to take fights that we thought uh, he shouldn't have taken, but he did because people didn't want to fight him. There's a lot of different ways of looking at this whole thing. Dylan Danis gets starched in the UFC. I don't yep. think you spend the time to build him. He's older. He's a trash talker. He's sure he may be good real quick. Well, he's only 30. No, but I'm saying, yeah, he's but 30. he's 30 years old. Like, yeah. you, I got maybe three years of you. No, yeah. Well, it's, it's as simple as this. Armin Sarukian is going to be fighting this yeah. week as the main event. He is, what, 20 and 3 at the age of 27. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Dylan Danis is yeah. 2 and 0. Oh. At the age, well, unless you want to count his disqualification in boxing, but two and zero in MMA but, at the age of. But 30. here's the thing, John. Even if I sign him, like who's to say that he's going to fight? That was the problem with Bellator. They signed him <laughs> and they wanted him to fight more. He just chose they, never to fight. He didn't want to fight. Ever. He didn't want to fight. No, no, you know. And when the fighters came along, you know, it wasn't like he just took and fought everyone he wanted. No, no, not not he took and fought whoever the promotion wanted. No, I was like, ah, eh, not that guy, not that guy. So, I mean, like, I, I don't think there's going to, even if he does fight, I think he wants to run around saying he got signed by the UFC. He wants to be the Twitter guy. I think that's what he wants to do, you know, and uh, keep making a name for himself that way, whatever. I, I'll give you $5,000 if you like this tweet. And that's that's your oh, business, geez. brother. All right, next thing. But Dana, Wright was, Dana White was right. There's just no way. He, he if Look, if he had no. sold $1.3 in pay-per-views, they would have already assigned him. They would have already they oh, would yeah. have already assigned him. There was just no doubt in my mind. They'd be like, I don't give a fuck about his attitude. The bottom line is, yeah. John. You can you can sell like that. Guess John what, Jones you, you has only it. sold one million dollar one million pay per view buys once in his career. John fucking Jones. If this yeah. guy did one point three, Dana's like, Bud Lights for everybody. <laughs> Bud Light for you. Bud Light for you. Bud Lights for everyone. Like Oprah. That's what he'd be doing. All right. Next thing. All right, uh, next one here. Uh, John, I'll let you go ahead and explain this one while I was playing first. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. shit. I love this one. And I don't want to. Can you zoom in on this? Can you zoom in on this? Look at this, nice. dude. Look at this. Be Ariel Hawani showing what a man can do when he is fast. And look at this. This isn't Ariel. It's but he not. sure does look like Ariel. But I love. <laughs> John. Hold on. I want you to see. What? Watch, watch the jacket. It doesn't even move because he, he's pulling these facts over. It doesn't even touch it. Doesn't even touch. <laughs> but John, <laughs> for that. a split second when you sent me Fast. the video, I was like, "Is that Ariel?" For just a split second. I know you for did. A split this I, I, the, the first time I looked at, it, I said, "Oh my god, it's Ariel." It, and then I realized, "Oh no, you it's know not. what was going through my mind?" Oh. Right, it was the sweater and the sweater. I was like, "Okay, look, it's probably cold in Canada." And I know he doesn't live in Canada, but he's somewhere up in the uh, New York, in yeah. New York area. So I'm like, "It's cold there yeah. too," but. But then I looked around the house and I'm like, there's no way that Ariel lives like that. So, <laughs> it was like, so, you know, I was, but in my mind, I was like, wait, I said, man, Ariel Hawaii's got some skills, baby out there throwing the, throwing the hands. 
Look at that. 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 Oh, God, so I love it. faster than podcast day for sure. <laughs> Ariel Hawani, this is not a dig at you. This is just we're no, having some fun, dude. brother. Uh, but all. first, I, just... I got to be honest, Ariel, for a split second, I really thought it was you. Just at quick glance, I was like, wait. Cause I caught, I came in. Honestly, got the when I first, first when I first clicked it on, I went, "Is that Ariel?" Yeah. And I went, "Oh no, it's not no. Ariel." And, yeah. yeah. Anyways, but, anyways, good laugh. It did. Not it big, did, enough, did not big enough. Not big enough. Nose. Oh, oh, there you go. There, there goes, goes Dave. Dave. Yeah, but you can't Dave do anything can't, about, can't do the about Dave. Nose. Man, Dave. So I used to, I used to like when Ariel used to have you know the uh, the nose, nose and stuff like that because he, he you know he just played off of it and that's the way you should. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. Uh all good uh, next what else you got for us all right, all right. this one is Last important one, yeah. yeah because how many times before you play this dave how many times have we heard about i fell on josh too many well, we finally have tape <laughs> of the, we have tape of the incident and this is exactly <laughs> what it was like right uh, here dave hit this sucker this is oh, exactly shit. what it was like <laughs> <laughs> First off, Big John has never yeah. pounced on anything like that. Not even his wife. Uh, it was just like. <laughs> uh, uh, dude, if, I don't care who you are. You have a 300 and some pound lioness oh, just jump on you. It's like, oh, this is not oh, going to go. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, there, I thought you had the real video for us one second. No. This was great. It looked just like that. Though. Oh man, <laughs> I, I have I have a couple of things that. What is what is this one? There's one here that I. Oh whoops 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 whoops. whoops let me see. What in the hell am I? That, what, how did I get there? All right, uh, this this, this one here. Why does it keep going to this thing? I don't know why. Why it keeps going there? Uh, on the news channel there that I I sent you, Dave. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the, the, there was like a flare up between Ric Flair, no pun intended and Michael oh, Chandler. Yeah. Did you see that? That's not real. I think it, I, I think it is. Well, I don't That's know. Maybe. Hope I don't know. That's not real. That was all set up. Hmm. Can't get to uh, there. I can hear it. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, there, let's, let's play it over. I can hear it. And you mean you mean what you mean you what should have been a five hour day? I don't and do what you do. You I don't this feel for sixty shit. years. It's embarrassed. There you go. You've been doing it sixty fifty-two. Don't overdate me, pal. But you've been doing it. I don't give a shit. In your face. I don't do lines, Rick. I'm well, then, 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 then the car shoot should have been there. You, 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 you look at bullshit. You, okay, I get it. You've done the thing. You're a fucking piss ad. I do, I'm not as good as you. I don't. I know you're not. not a, I fucking know. But it doesn't that. apologize. You in the locker room, and it wasn't. Yeah, well, I'm looking okay. out. What do you think about it? No, it was good. Move my hand. Move my hand. No, move my fucking hand. You're a legend. No, I'm not afraid of shit. No, I'm not. I'm not actually, afraid of you. Actually, for actually you, you are a cocky old man, like old man. See that right there is what tells me. You keep on doing your thing. Woo! Five O's in the TM, dude. Just don't, dude. You're right. <laughs> Rick Flair's too soft. He wouldn't. This wouldn't be real anyway. Rick Flair's way too soft. He he, yeah, he does soft. more kayfabe stuff than than he does oh, your stuff. Nothing but see how he feels. <laughs> oh, look at that! And, and, and Chandler slaps him going back, so I know it's. Fun. Oh man! Mm, it's he's he's got to be careful that he didn't break Rick Flair's hip. Oh, well, I probably killed him. <laughs> like when when jo- when John uh, fell on me, I was more trying to cushion his hip so he didn't break his hip. Fucking. You know, if you if an Thank old man breaks much. his hip, right, it's pretty much a death yeah, sentence. You know, it's good. Downhill, yeah, it's all downhill, downhill from downhill there, from right? There. All downhill. I mean, fuck, seven <laughs> ribs, we're okay, but let's break a hip and we're done. Did I ever tell you the story about that when I went to the hospital? Yeah, your wife was on the phone with me, panicked that you were gonna die. <laughs> she was. <laughs> she was like, uh, no. You know what's funny is because I when when that happened, my wife wanted to call an ambulance. I said no. Finally, I go in my truck and I go to this place in this hospital and they do a cat scan on me mm-hmm. right and they come back and they said oh you've got three broken ribs and a punctured mm-hmm. lung right and i was like all right and they said yeah, but we need you to go to the university of tennessee medical center we can't do anything mm-hmm. for you right and i'm thinking what are you gonna do for you know well, okay so they put me in a damn ambulance 
Worst ride yeah. ever. I go, <laughs> so when I go to UT, they, they pretty much right away put me in a room and this very nice uh, female intern comes in, right? And she looks at me and she says, she goes, how are you feeling? I said, ah, I have a little, you know, little tightness when I breathe, but I'm fine, right? Mm -hmm. And she goes, well, you've got five broken ribs. I would hope so. Yeah. Right? And I go, hey, I just broke two ribs from that damn ambulance ride <laughs> Come, coming in here, right? So then she goes out and she tells me that uh, the doctor along with the resident staff because it's a teaching hospital, right? Mm -hmm. This is my favorite line because my wife is sitting here off to my left and in walks all of these like, you know, resident doctors, probably 10 of them. And in walks the main guy, and he didn't even look at me. He is right. I'm sitting on the bed table thing, right? And he just looks over and he puts, he plinks the x rays up into the thing, right? And he doesn't even look at me or anything, right? He says, All right, people. He goes, Who here can freaking count? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just like looking at him, like, Well, what's, what's he talking about, right? He goes, Let's count this together. And he starts going, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven broken ribs, 58 year old, oh. high mortality rate with this injury. Do we understand that? <laughs> right. So my wife kind of looks at me, right? And she's like, What the fuck did you just say, right? And the dude at that moment, the guy kind of turns over and he looks at me and he kind of gives a, he goes, Big John McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, yeah. Right? And he goes, well, how you doing? I said, well, not too good. You just told me I'm going to die. <laughs> right? And he goes, oh, no, no, no. Not, not, you're, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> right? I was like, I was going to try to convince best, me after that, buddy. The, the, be, the best doctor's experience. I loved oh. it. I was just like, you know, oh, no, no, you're and, fine. In yeah. the process of like, yeah. you're not supposed to be laughing at that moment. But yet I can imagine. Oh, like, dude. Uh, uh, uh. dude well i wasn't laughing oh man that was the one thing i knew don't laugh it hurts ah uh, john with his old with his stories man they're great i love them come love on them. hospital stories are always the best the hospital stories. yeah yeah i'm trying to remember what was it there was a fight that i oh no no it was uh it was the missus she decided to uh back when way 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 back in the day uh she was out dancing with some friends and i was there too and and she did a lawn dart nose dive right into a chair and split her forehead right here and so we were all at the hospital waiting for her to get stitched up until like four in the morning and so we all decided to go get 50 taco 50 jack-in-the-box tacos and sit in the and sit oh, yeah. in the waiting room for hours on a saturday night to get her <laughs> stitched up <laughs> oh but it was funny she was just there and all of a sudden she was swaying a little bit and just down she went Beek. And everyone's like ran over down to me. Goes Everyone ran over to me. Hey, hey, she's down. I was like, oh shit. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> this was before, you know, kids and everything. So <laughs> it was great. All right. Well, hey guys, hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh go to WayneInMerch.com. WayneInMerch.com. Pick up some of our hoodies, our sweaters, our long sleeves, our hats, all those things that are available there. Um, check it all out on WayneInMerch.com. And John, take us away, buddy. Welcome back. Hey. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. It's good being back, and I hope everyone enjoyed the show. Enjoy the UFC from Austin. It's going to be fantastic, and we will see you.